many people that God uses are often not gifted in the area of speech. Correct? Uh, You're listening to one right now. D.L. Moody's. Uh, I can just, there's a long list of people, uh, especially Methodist circuit riders and early awakenings and and uh, they didn't have a, 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 a degree in, in English and grammar, and they weren't a great speaker because they, their, where was their power? It was their power is in their brokenness and in their weakness. And when I am weak, then he is strong. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes from. And Paul's saying here, our goal is to magnify the message, not to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. I'm going to give you a little insight into my ministry and when I prepare sermons, maybe throughout the, the morning here, but one of them is, I pray, Lord, I want to magnify the message of Christ. I want to magnify who you are. We want to, we want to leave here lifted up and built up and strengthened. And look at how good our God is. That's why I love that song. All hell, King Jesus. All hell, King Jesus, because we know Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord. Everyone at some point will say, all hell, King Jesus. So you might as well sing it now. Oh, I could stay there for a little while, but I'm going to go. Here's the key, that your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So I'm sure many of you are thinking, what is power? What's he talking about? Shane, I see these guys on TV. They do weird things. Is that what you're talking about? No. I'm going to make this half blow over. You all flow over. You know, and oh, look, it's so powerful. Or you see these, uh, um, you know, maybe elevated in certain areas. And what's your definition of power? Well, I'm going to tell you what the biblical definition of power is. Very simple. I believe it's Acts 1 8. I didn't write down the reference. But it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And as we've learned earlier, it might be good for those who haven't heard this before, the, 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 there are three primary prepositions when it comes to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will run, run alongside of a person. It's where you hear the high school there in town, paraclete. It comes from the word in the Greek to come alongside. So the Holy Spirit comes alongside as a helper, as a comforter. But he is also in the believer, E-N, inside the believer, dwelling in the believer. That's why you can quench and grieve the Holy Spirit by how you live, the choices you make. But there's a very interesting word that's used in Acts and also in Jesus' life, and the Holy Spirit comes upon E-P-I, epi in the Greek. It's coming upon. It's this overfilling, overflowing, abundant Holy Spirit coming out of your life. And what you say, what you do in your workplace, what you do in your family, it's, it's bubbling out of you. And I used this example before many times, but you, you, if you weren't here, you don't remember. But if I, what would happen if I would let the water hose turn on the water in the baptismal and just leave it on? During my sermon, what's going to happen? Uh Uh-oh, what's happening? Here it comes. Here it comes. Same thing when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person. That's why they use that word baptized in the Holy Spirit, unction of the Holy Spirit, anointing of this Holy Spirit. It's this overflowing abundance of God's Spirit that it just flows out. Those people who do the most for God are those who are filled with His Spirit. It comes out. But if we're not careful, what can we do? We can quench and grieve the Spirit. How? You name it. Any type of sin that we love and we're not going to repent of and we take pride in it, uh, anger, critical spirit. I've seen that. I've had to repent of this before. Pray for me. In the church, we can have a critical spirit. We know what the Bible says. We know people aren't living like it. What's going on here? Mr. Pharisee comes out and be critical and judgmental, gossiping, complaining, slandering, backbiting, uh, sin, hooked in besetting sin, 
from any type of addiction. We just keep quenching and quenching and grieving the spirit of God. That person will lack power. But thank God he doesn't make us wait a year. You can pray like David, oh God, I've sinned against you and you only have I sinned. Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Fill me again with the spirit of God. I'm repenting, I'm confessing white. Wash me as white as snow. Cleanse my heart. And you can go from stuck in sin to fill with the spirit of God in zero to 100 in 1.2 seconds. There's consequences. I don't want to minimize sin but I, I, I want to magnify what God can do in the life of a person who fully surrenders and repents of their sin and gives their heart to God. Anybody I've ever met before that has filled mightily with God's spirit has, has struggled with sin. They've repented of it. They've confessed. They bring it to the light, and their power comes in that confession and that repentance. Do you know what happens when we try to hide sin? You, we quench and grieve the Spirit of God. Throughout the Bible, it says confess, 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 bring it to the light. That's what confession is. If we were to take time to look at that word, it's a bringing to the light something that is unknown or something that was sitting in darkness. You're bringing it to the light and you're confessing it. You're bringing out their transparency. And then God can move through that person. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritual power. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall what? Act weird. You shall live boldly for God. You shall witness. You shall have a deep and abiding passion for the truth. And you do great things for God. The Bible, it's clear. Those who are, have this spiritual power, they have a deep passion for God's word. They love God's word. It's the anchor to their soul. It's the, the bread to their soul. It's the food. It's a nourishment. So the demonstration of the Spirit's power is what God is doing through you. The Holy Spirit's power through you.